Isn't this back in the day where you, when you take a picture, you got to wave it a bunch of times? Oh, stop. Get that out of there. Is that, what, is that what's going on? Is the that, po- Polaroid? Yeah, is that a pol- Polaroid camera? Pretty sure that's like the 80s. That's the 80s. This oh, is see like, what I'm saying, though? Like, even about 20 years before that? <laughs> Are you serious? He's built into the suit. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a load of Bologna to me. What is up, Twist the World fans? We are back. Episode 6. Kicking it off with my boys, Cody and Andy. Here we go. What's up, guys? Yo, what's up? We doing? Hey, we're doing great. How was, uh... How's everybody getting ready for the holidays? Big things coming up. I got a wedding that's getting ready to happen. Wait, you're getting married? Uh, I think so. I mean, I, uh, this is news to I, me. I know. You have a girlfriend? No, yeah. No, I uh, I thought you were like, you know, a podcaster. Yeah, that and and single. And I do other work and I sit in a lonely, quiet room by myself every day. So it could be imaginary. I get you know what? It could just be a conspiracy. <laughs> um all my fans out there. It could be. Maybe we'll touch on that. All right, yeah. move on. This is stale. Let's let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good attempt, but uh, ah. it was a pretty that was pretty sore open. So seriously, sorry, Amy. Uh, <laughs> um, seriously, holidays coming up. You guys excited? Big plans? I don't have big plans, but I'm excited. No, you know, I mean, first Christmas yeah. with my wife, which is nice. Yeah. House is decorated. It looks nice. Yeah. So, now, yeah. now it's decorated. Now that we're in December. Yeah. Um, you know, I was like, my, my wife every year wants me to like put up the Christmas decorations in like October. And I'm like, no, no. I found a, a, a TikTok a couple weeks ago. I thought it was great. And this guy going, yeah, I got my Christmas tree up. It's great. Follow me. And he like walks him through the house and he's going through the hallways and everything. And he opens up the garage door and he goes, it's right there because it's not December 1st. And I was like, that's me. <laughs> yeah. That's me. Literally. Um, I do Whoa. have. I mean, I, can I interject? Sure. Honestly. Yeah, why not? Honestly. I think if, if. If your wife wasn't so excited about the holidays, I don't know that we'd ever see a tree from you. I don't I mean, like hate Christmas. 50, 50 I don't hate Christmas. The, the argument there is my birthday's in November. Thanksgiving's in November. And so my birthday's two weeks before Thanksgiving, and I always got birthday gifts, and I always got to play with them on Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving has always been my favorite holiday because I got to enjoy like my birthday and then food and then football, yeah. right? Things that I just love. Yeah. And so the idea of skipping that and just jumping right into Christmas like Walmart and everyone else does, uh, I'm not okay with it. <laughs> so uh, I make sure that we sing the Thanksgiving song all month long, which is happy birthday. Yeah. And mm. uh, we can move so on afterwards. What you're saying is, is a little bit of a selfish intent, uh, slight, slight self-centeredness. Absolutely. Got it. Perfect. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Right. But that just, that, that stints back to the, you're always right thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. Yeah. Narcissism yep. at its best. Right. Um, but we still love them. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, Cody house looks great. Thank love you. It. Yeah. Beautiful tree, beautiful decorations. We'll, you know, definitely tell your wife she did an amazing job. Indeed. Because we're not, we're trying to figure out what part you did, but it's cool. It's none of it. I'll help you. Yes. <laughs> he just lives here. Yeah, I just live. I just go here. Yes. I just go. So, um, so hey fans, if you guys haven't gotten a chance, make sure you jump on that Apple, Spotify, uh, hit the subscribe and follow so that you guys can get the updated episodes. Um, and, uh, the, uh, the last episode, we hope you guys liked it. We shot it from the hip. Uh, the off the cuff. I was uncomfortable. Yes. I don't was. like not having facts and data. I was trying my best to get them as fast <laughs> as possible. So, and, and just a disclaimer, um, you know, we, we definitely know 9 11 happened and we, you know, we just we wanted to throw out conspiracy theories against it. Right. And so if you hadn't got a chance, check it out. Episode five was off the cuff. So, uh, we're going to get into episode six, uh, a, a fun and crazy conspiracy that, has been around for quite a long time. And that is the moon landings. Were they real? Did they happen? And if they did, as a lot of evidence would suggest that they did, why have we not made an attempt to go back yet? So, um, some, of the, some of the things we're going to... I just want to kick off with is some of the facts. One... If you guys don't know out there, we have landed on the moon more than once. Okay. 
Uh, Apollo 11 was the first. Um, that was uh, 1969. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin. You know, oh, there's that guy again. Yeah, yeah. yeah the the pyramid is that, guy. Is that where he's from? That is. <laughs> yeah, that was the movie he was on. Yeah, he's in that movie. The thing that they filmed in a set. Not, of the, not of the moon. <laughs> it's coming later. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a fact that I threw out when we were pre-talking was the idea that I- I'm pretty sure that a younger generation doesn't realize that we actually went to the moon more than once and right. landed more than once. Correct. Like most people are like, oh yeah, we landed on the moon. I remember that. It was like 69, right? But if you told them we landed on, you know, in 69, 70, 71, yeah. 72, yes. um, most people are like, <laughs> I didn't know that, but it's because it wasn't as big a deal. And again, if you're not first. Right. Exactly. And, you know, there's the, you know, so we, we started... We started, we started at NASA and the space race and all that. And um, just so we're all, Paul 11, you know, of course, for America, we wanted technological advances and we wanted to get, to, we wanted to, get to the moon and the moon is the closest celestial, uh, you know, object to us as, as a planet. And so we're like, hey, we got to get there. But a lot of it was also the Soviets were, they were, they jumped out the gate. Sputnik. Yeah. Right. They, they got both Sputniks. They got like they, yeah, they, they got had launched two satellites in space before we did us. anything. Yeah. Like so, we're over here, like oh no! So the red curtain, the Soviet communism, and they're like this country just keeps over and over and over, and they're jumping out. And so, as a country, we're like oh, we got to get there. And so, a lot of a lot of people believe that even though it was all stated for technological advances, truly the probably a lot of the the drive behind it was we can't let the Soviets beat us there, right? Um, so they, they did beat us to space, but just not to, they did the moon. beat us to sp- and they yeah. did, there's some other, you know, like the first woman in space and the first, uh, man craft, like they did all of that before we ever got in there. So again, here they are accomplishment after accomplishment after accomplishment. And we're like, Hey, you know, we had JFK over here. Like, are you guys going to do anything? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, hurry up. Uh, so Apollo 11, July 16th through the 24th, it was, uh, 1969, Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong. Um, and so when we got there and landed, the big piece is that you ha- again have to look at is, is again, the, the fact that we as a country were, were really truly trying to beat the Soviets and it really did. It affected a lot of the Soviet momentum. In fact, you know, some, uh, some theorists and, 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 um, and, and individuals believe that it was probably a, a big crush to their ego. And started to affect the downfall in the beginning of, you know, what we know. Once you once the pretense of being first is gone, yeah, um, you lose motivation and political motivation at that point as well. So I'm sure a lot of it was politically driven. I mean, yeah, JFK was like, we will be the yeah, first. We, you know, we got to get there, right? Yeah. So uh, when it happened, if it happened, but when it happened, um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's a blow. Exactly. Like, well, why would you? Why would you? Why would you continue to try? Exactly. Exactly. And then, so we, we had Apollo 12 and then Apollo 13, which was a, a failure, had a lot of uh, equipment issues. We'll go up with that. Um, Apollo 14, 15. Um, 15 was the longest time. That was the first time we'd actually spent the most time on the moon. The other times it was like they jumped out, took a couple of pics, and they're like, all right, guys, let's go home. Right. And so 15 really became this where we started going deeper into the studies. Uh, 14, we started the studies, but 15 is where they, they spent some, an actual amount of time with, the, with the, uh, the, the landing modules and all of that, sitting on the moon and, and studying it. Um, 16, uh, it was even longer. And 16 is where we started trying to research volcanic activity, right? It's where we, we landed in a certain crater and they were like confident that this crater was going to show Volcanic activity. And for those of you out there that don't know, like a, a proof of volcanic activity would suggest a potential ability for life. Very important um, because I, we're going to, I'm going to jump into Apollo 17, which is where a lot of deep stuff gets found. Uh, so again, 16, that was like that, hey, we're going to go out there. We're going to try to find volcanoes, right? And they didn't. They didn't. They, they came back with some rocks and they were just rocks, right? They were uh, moon rocks. They were moon rocks. Right. You um, use those to evolve Pokemon. Funny, yes. <laughs> um, without a moonstone. Those are moonstones. Hey, different. a rock and a stone changed my mind. Same thing. I, I mean, you know, uh-huh. synonyms, I guess. It's, um, but, you know, who knows? The, the, again, if you believe that the loon, moon landing didn't happen, you probably believe that these guys just went out in their backyard, grabbed some stones, and said, look what we found. So um, it, it wouldn't necessarily 
be wrong. There's not, it's not like back then they could prove that these rocks are much different. But then Apollo 17 happened. Yeah. So this is where a lot more evidence would suggest that it happened. Okay. Again, could it be fabricated? 100%. It could. Uh, our government is a, an advanced government. A lot of people say there's always that, uh, that saying that our government is 10 to 15 years more advanced than what we see or know. And so, sure, you know, as a, as a technologically advanced country, you're absolutely going to make sure that your government is more advanced than anybody in the world. Um, but Apollo 17, so December 7th through the 19th, was the first time uh, an actual scientist, so not just some military pilot, not just, you know, some engineer, we're talking about a, a scientist who studies biology and things like that, went with them and walked on the moon. Um, uh, there's some of their big discoveries. One of the, the first ones was that the moon once had a dyno, a dynamo generated magnetic field. Okay. And dynamo? Dynamo generated. So it means that it, it, the way it spins and the way it pulls gravity, right. Is a, and it, it's, it's a crucial piece that the earth for instance has one, right. So the earth, we know that the earth needs that. It needs this, this, um, this physics to sustain life. It is, it is an absolutely imperative piece. So again, why this is so important is they go and they now prove that the moon once had one. So that's the life first. Life or had the dynamo generated? They had the dynamo generated oh, magnetic field. So gotcha, that's the sure. first clue that tells them, hey, the moon at one point could have very well held life. But the other one was they finally did find orange soil containing volcanic glass. Okay. You put the two together, and now you have evidence the potential of life. For the potential of life. Whatever that life is, whether it's some greenerage, you know, uh aliens. Yeah. <laughs> Jump right to it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we we got a dynamo generated magnetic field and some volcanic glass. Boom, aliens are here. Mm. So, you know. Um, but again, it, very big findings. Because these were such a uh, uh, all the Apollos, all about landing on the moon from, hey, we're trying to beat the Soviets, and now we keep going back, and we keep going back. And they finally, finally find evidence that the moon could sustain life. You would think that you would be like, oh, now we got to find a way to stay out there longer, find a way to, we got to dig deeper. We maybe, maybe dig down into the soil deeper. We got to get some equipment out there. Like, I mean, wouldn't that be the thoughts? Like you finally found evidence that life at some point was on the moon because you have evidence of, of, of volcanic activity. Okay. We know it's terraforming. We have evidence of a dynamo, gen, dino, genoma, uh, gen, blah, 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 the, the, dynamo generated magnetic field. Okay. Which is an important piece to creating atmosphere and things of that nature. You take these two pieces, boom. Why would you not find a way to get back again? Get your get your advancements up, get your technology, maybe get some gigantic drill and get out there and and find out. Uh because there's scientists that, that look at this and they go, there's very well that there could be water under the surface like we, you know, the like Mars and there's there's a lot of different things that could transpire but we never ever went back. Or so we thought, but we'll go into that in a second. All right. So let's get back to the original. The original, con I mean, the history lesson on that is showing other people that, listen, we, I think we got there five or six times, correct? So we're going through six it times. all, trying to yep. see the justification on whether or not we got there or not. Going back to Apollo 11, right? Which is the original where we thought we actually learned. I thought, I say thought in the sense that I'm going to give it an argument. We're going to argue yeah. and see what happens. Um, the conspiracy that we're trying to solve today is whether or not the moon landing happened. Right. Right. And then some of the justifications there on 17 are, if it did, why have we not been back? Right. And, and then not going back, is that a justification that it didn't happen originally? Uh, because if it didn't happen, there would be no motivation to go back and if, if we've never been there. Correct. So, so it's a two, it's a, like a two, we got a two sided coin here going. Here going. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely want to analyze both. Um, so that, that jumps me into, uh, we're going to start with our, our first individual. And he, you can Google him and, and check this guy out. Uh, his name is Bill Hasing. He was an employee of Rocketdyne. Uh, like a high up 
employee of Rocketdyne. Rocketdyne was the company that helped design the Saturn V rocket engine. Okay, so the rocket engines that propel us into space, right? He helped design these engines. He was a major contributor, okay, both science, monetarily, the whole works to the U.S. space program from 56 to 63, okay? So in this time span, this is the time span where we as a country were really trying to get there. Keep in mind, Apollo 11 didn't happen until 69. So, but in this period, this is where the rockets were being generated or created and all these different things. And he was a, he was a big part of that. So a couple things that case that casing casing is by the way, a full believer and a full, like makes it very, made it very vocal all the way up to his death that we never went to the moon. Okay. That we never landed. And it, so again, here's this guy part of the discovery and the building of these rockets and major contributor to the program itself. And he's out here running around for decades going, it never happened. It never happened. It never happened. Uh, some of his smaller ones that other, that NASA has so-called debunked first is in the pic, a lot of the pictures there are, you see no stars. Keep in mind, the moon does not have um, an atmosphere like the earth, right? So reflecting light back in. No, yeah, no light radiation. Right. So we don't so we don't have any of that. So there's no stars in any of the pictures. Right. So that's one of his first like, hey, there's no stars in any of the pictures. You know, so, so the, their debunk is the way um the way the moon sits and you know, gases in space and, and all this. Okay, I'm not I'm not some NASA scientist, so it, I it sounds legit, right? I'm like, all right, you know, hey, maybe they're right. I don't know. Well, I mean, okay. This All guy's right. pretty Before smart. Before we go way. too deep into just reading, reading a bunch of different conspiracy theories, like, okay, the technology, we're talking about 1969. Right. Now, mind you, there was other photos taken, yeah. whatever, but 1969, were we capable of taking a photo just, and, and I wasn't alive. I don't know, but did we have photos of the sky from Earth that showed stars from a, the kind of, I mean, the camera quality wasn't great anyways on right. what we saw. Television was relatively... Yeah. You know, was it black and white, right? So, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't. To know, me, yeah. that to, okay, it's an argument. No, uh, I, I maybe hear the, maybe the quality of the camera, maybe the camera that was there, yeah. maybe it wasn't intended to pick up past a certain distance. I, I don't know. Um, yeah. we're, we're again the the idea of being on the moon. We as an existence have only been on one planet, so our experience of what we experience looking at the sky from this planet is unique. Because it's the only one we've ever experienced. Right. So what we would see from the moon, unless we were there, it's all speculation Absolutely. in my mind. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the idea that that's an yeah. argument, maybe, maybe not. And I, I get the claims of that in the photos. And we're not just talking about some random dude that looked at a picture. No, I get it. I, I mean, that's why. He's using it as a, as a backing to one of his arguments, though. And his multiple arguments. And again, keeping in mind, I, this, this man's highly intelligent, you know, um, that we're, we're not just talking about some Joe Smo out in the middle of, of Kansas walking out in his backyard going, oh, I see stars and I don't see him in that picture. So does it say whether he was like fired or like, oh, or why did he stop working in 62, like seven years before they took off? I think he was working until 63, correct? 63. Yeah. yeah. Six. Um, I'm not sure. I'm sure. I mean, yeah, he, he worked for the company that designed their actual rocket. So. Correct. He worked. He worked. Was he was high up for rocket dying. Once his design element done, maybe he wasn't a part of the engineering of the actual rocket. He was just like, I, I don't know. I don't. I didn't dig into this as much as you did. Right. Um. And, and I don't who know. knows? Maybe maybe he got fired, and he's like, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna trash this whole thing. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Let's You're, see what Google University has to say. Right. So while he's doing that, I'm just gonna bring up another one. His next his next stance was that the um, under the lunar module, the, when you see the pictures of the lunar module, there is not a blast crater meaning so when it comes down and it's it the propulsion system that prevents it from crashing into the moon you know launches you know it, it fires off he's saying you don't see any kind of propulsion crater nothing like you don't see it now nasa says with winds and everything else and again I, who's to, who's to believe who right and that's the argument across the, the internet and all these other conspiracy theorists is um, and the non-conspiracy theorist is it's like this battle back and forth. At the end of the day, it's either this gentleman who was intelligent enough to be a high up at Rocketdyne and create these things and understand physics and engineering. And, uh, you know, you got to understand these things. 
It's his word against NASA, which, yeah, NASA's made up of a ton of intelligent people, right? So it's like, that's really the, you got to weigh this out. So he's looking at this picture like, no blast crater. You know, these propulsion systems that he designs, uh, you know, the way they fire off um, would have absolutely created, you know, a, a, a pattern when it landed. And he says, you can't see one. Okay, Google says he left for personal reasons. That leaves a lot to uh, that's, interpret. There. That's very vague, but yeah. yeah, he he did possibly lose his mind if he's coming up with conspiracy theories <laughs> just possible. a few minutes later. Yeah, um, I, I don't know. I mean, again, gravity's different on the moon. How things are represented, what happens when you, Absolutely. you know, again, this is a guy that has never himself been to the moon. He doesn't right. know what the atmosphere feels like, what it is. I'm sure that scientific equipment can test and say, okay, gravity's at this weight, but Again, no one had gone to it at that point. So yeah. when he was testing and actually building and designing this back, I guess he was the leader. I was looking at it, He was like the technical... He was the head. The head of the technical publications for Rocketdyne, right? Kind of a big deal. Kind yeah. of a big deal, yeah. but resigned. Kind of like Cody to us, right? Six years before it launched. I mean... A lot can, a lot can change. <laughs> yeah, and you know, six it, years. you know what's weird is like, uh, I mean, like, where do the... I mean... He was the original rocket scientist. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because they did, rockets didn't exist before this. <laughs> yeah. So, so you heard the so saying. Yeah. He, he's just this guy who makes rocket thrusters. Science, yeah. yeah. So I mean, you know what like, absolutely is. Yeah. And so like he he made rocket science, and that's what's weird to me is that like uh, he was working on these thrusters, but I mean like, but what was he doing before that? Was he like make because he wasn't making thrusters for anybody else? I mean, no one else needs thrusters of that magnitude, uh, right? Right. I mean, actually, in looking at it, he I don't know that he actually designed any of this. He was a he's a technical writer. So he was like a, he did publications. So his, it was less the designing of, I'm like reading through it. Like he, yeah, I think he was, he was more like a, he was more like a head PR type guy. He was a PR. Or, he was or a, like partner relations, a PIO, right? right? So, oh, this guy's a crackpot. And so, uh, well, no, but he was, he was still, he's, he's a media. He was still educated right? he's, he's, his job is to go to take the research. So he most likely because he was a technical writer, yeah. he had an in-depth knowledge of how those things work. Engineering, design, yeah. everything. He was still, he was still educated. However, he had to be. Sure. He yeah. didn't have necessarily hands-on experience as to designing or building a robot or no, a rocket himself. So there's an argument to be made there that he didn't have the depth of knowledge required to make some of the arguments that he's making. Uh, again, he, he was in the Navy. He worked as a salesman after the Navy. And then it says become a, he became a technical writer at Rocketdyne uh, in the early 50s and then became the head of technical publications, which means that basically he was a reporter that worked in the PR section, the technical writing section yeah. of Rocketdyne. Probably someone creating what it looked like, right? Blah, 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 blah. I think he's full of Bologna. I think Bologna, yes. I, I, I think, and, and again, we've got more facts here. I think what he's arguing makes sense. Yeah. From a person that writes technical reports based on, you know, zeros and ones. And the idea right. is he understood how it, how it worked. He yeah. understood how it was designed to work. So taking what he had learned from the time that he was, I think it was like 53 to 63. Like he worked there a, a pretty long time. Right. Uh, actually, sorry, 56 to 63. 63. But still a long time. I mean, long time. Yeah. So he has an in-depth knowledge of how that stuff works, but he's not the guy that designed it or built it. Yeah, yeah he's not a Joe Schmo, but he's like pretty close to it. Right. Schmo to me, honestly. Right. He doesn't, if he didn't build the thing, he's not designing <laughs> anything, he's just writing about it. Yeah. Kind of close to a Joe Schmo to me. But he was the first to come out and kind of red flag it, right? Right. First to come out and say, yeah, I don't know. This is kind of thing. Do we know when he came out and said these were conspiracies? So, um, I do not have that date, um, but it was, a again, keep in mind, Paul 11 didn't even land until 69. So it was sometime after Paul 11 landed, um, probably with, you know, a few months of it landing. By that point, he did not work for Rocketdyne anymore. So back to, I think, what we were talking about a little bit just a few minutes ago, Cody, is that uh, he, yeah, may, even though Andy found that he left for personal reasons, but it's so vague what personal reasons yeah. are constituted as, and that may just be a, a cover for some, you know, they fired him. Who knows? Yeah, right. Maybe that's his personal reason, you know? Um, maybe he liked to tip a few back at the, the workplace, and they were like, mm, you gotta go. And so uh, there may be a little bit of animosity. And he took his little bit of stance and, and power and clout and started bashing again you know these are just some of the uh, uh, early pieces that are out there as far as he, he kind of kicked off the beginning of the conspiracy of 
did we land on the moon? 1976 is he when re- he is when he came he forward. Re- he released a pamphlet. Okay, said, so yes, that said we never landed on the moon. America's thirty billion dollar swindle. So by the way, that's after all six had already landed. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> all six had landed. We had decided that how many? Was, wait, how much? Thirty billion. And back in the 70s, 60s and 70s? Yeah. Now, again, I don't know That's where his facts are. That's I don't know how much money was spent on it. I mean, listen, we landed on the moon. It's possible. Oh, uh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure it's not cheap. that was the pamphlet. He released the pamphlet in 1976. He's not going on a road trip here. No, but so. this is the start. This is where it kind of started off. And, yeah. and the guy's coming out and having, you know, again, he was smart to release well, what and he it, would call data. And, and so he throws these little things out. Like another one is how the shadows fall on the pictures. And NASA says, well, different, you know, because he says based on the sun and, and, so on, and then NASA says, well, their sun isn't the only light in space, which is true. 100%. There's stars and many suns and larger suns all over the universe. So they, that's their stance is that the way the sun, the way the moon had rotated, that another light source had come in and boom, the shadows were the way they were. Because if you look at it, the shadows are actually, they're going forward of the, and you can see where the, the sun dips out in the front end of the picture, but you can see the shadows going the opposite direction. So that was his stance. It's like, you can see where the sun is shining on the moon, but the shadows are going against that it's, sunlight. It sounds yeah. like a guy arguing about shadows that lives on Earth. Right. 100%. So, uh, this one was uh, kind of interesting, though. Um, so he, he takes the stance of saying that the fact that so NASA was founded in 1958, um, Right after the Soviets had made many successful space accomplishments, um, and right off the gate, NASA experienced a multitude of, of setbacks, including Apollo One the launch pad fire, killing all pilots. Rip. So, right, not good. That's Shout hey, out to we're getting ready to go, and living. boom, yeah. Um, and he says, yet yeah, from nineteen six from nineteen sixty nine, they were able to successfully and subtly perform man flight back to back to back with success. He states, going on to say that it, it goes against statistical odds, right? Um, and then again, compares it back to the Soviets, who advancement, 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 but yet they couldn't get to the moon, right? So they're advancing, advancing, advancing. We're having issue, issue, issue. And then all of a sudden, oh, successful man flight, successful man flight, successful man flight, land, 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 land. And the Soviets can't even get to the moon. We're not even just talking about standing on the moon. They can't, they're having even, they at this point hadn't even gotten to the moon. So, um, that was his stance. That was his, his, his real big piece to his argument. Again, yes, there's not, you know, it's not like he went himself. It's not like he's ever left the planet. And so we're just listening to the stance of this individual, um, who worked for Rocketdyne, um, had some clout. And again, is it's very very feasible, but some animosity, and he's like, oh, I'm just gonna trash NASA, right? Yeah. So, True. it who knows, right? Um, but there's more outside of Bill Casing, but that's Bill Casing for now. We'll we'll set him aside. Andy's right. Who knows what this guy? You know so, what? Sorry, um, I, I meant to say Cody. So, um, uh, I'll allow it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the other first pieces. Uh, Neil Armstrong, and this is just a, a quote of him in the Apollo 8 mission. So this was the the first one to actually get to the moon. Did not land, but got to the moon. Um, they were not prepared to land. That wasn't ever the mission. It was oh, just, they're in the orbit. They, yeah, they were just going to orbit the moon, slingshot it, and come back. So Apollo 8. Okay. And, and he's part of that mission. Uh, Neil Armstrong? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He was the pilot. So in Apollo 8 mission, 1968, he states that you know, knowing all, all of his abilities and he's highly decorated pilot. He's the one that slingshots this thing around. And he said, even, even just getting to the moon was extremely difficult. And then launching it back around. This is in 1968. And this is in December of 1968, I believe, which is actually only seven months before Apollo 11 land, so seven months. He states, he goes on the record to state that, um, it's already difficult enough to get here and, and then come back. Not to mention, he said landing on a on on the planet when he gave it a at a at a one to ten when he was asked on a one to ten how difficult would you say it was he said a thirteen. This is the man wow. that is that is supposed to who then seven months later does it. Yes, or can advancements jump up that quick in that shorter time? Absolutely, but 
in all his expertise at that point, just in Apollo 8, he said it's pretty much impossible to do. And then he does it. Because when he was asked, like, how landing back on the planet was, like on Earth? No, or no, no. Were you talking about the moon? Trying to get, so getting to the moon. Uh huh. Landing on it. Cause it's not just like, hey, we're going to go to the moon. We're going to jump out. We're going to land. You know, we're going to jump out the car, have some fun and jump back in it and head back home. Right. Right. There's, there's a, a ton of math, ton of physics that has to take place. Right. So, cause the moon is moving. Uh, the moon does not have a gravitational pull like the Earth does at this point. Even, you know, we know that scientists later found that there was one once before, but there is not one now, which is why there's no gravity on the moon. Right. And so he's looking at, and, and back in 1968 on Apollo 8, he's looking at the physics of it. He's looking at the trajectories and everything else. You, you had to, it, it hadn't been done yet. So he's had like, you'd have to hit it on point to make this landing. Um, and not, he went on a little bit later talking about the, the complexity and the difficulty. And it, you know, you're, it could very well crash, right? Because you have to hit this thing perfect. Otherwise, you're going to go right into the side of the moon. So, it doesn't 100% necessarily prove one way or another, but just keep in mind, Neil Armstrong, the pilot of the Apollo 8 mission, stating how almost impossible it would be. Again, already difficult enough. Um, he, when comparing to uh, um, like landing back on Earth, like landing back on Earth, 3 out of 10, right? So he's saying 13 out of 10, right? So how could he give any other number like i understand 13 is just kind of but that to me is a very exaggerated number on it's almost on purpose he he can't say it's a 10 no because because he could do a 10 i mean a one through 10 is something that had been done before right that's so the point i the point is i i don't think that we take that seriously and it's more like a grain of salt concept in the sense sure. that he's just saying what i'm about to do is impossible right that's but, that's part of the reason why this is such a big deal is because it was something that had never been obtained before. The idea behind it, I mean, there's a thousand movies beyond, beyond that. Um, even the one where the, the, I don't remember the movie, but she helps basically do the math on what it would take to land at a certain velocity right. at a certain angle. And I'm right. like, that's that, like unfathomable to me. Just the math behind all that the figures. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Yes. Like that's, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. Right. It's incredible. And no, and so, you're, and you're absolutely correct. But conspiracy theorists, again, they're not just going to take this one piece. They're going to take everything that's out there, and that's where these conspiracies come from, right? You just have to look at the fact that the man, seven months prior to actually doing what he said was impossible, straight up said that, you know, again, he's the pilot. Math is math, yes, but he's the pilot. He's the one that has to make this landing. He's the one that has to make the trajectory. He's the one that has to slingshot around the moon. He's the one that's got to do all this stuff. So this is the man himself going on record. So conspiracy theorists are going, and then seven months later, he did it. Or did he? Right, and that's just the that's the the conspiracy behind it. Shaky but anyway, ground. Mm. It's a little shaky ground. Yeah. That's 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 a little stretch right there. Right. Uh, so some of the some of the other more off the the side fun ones, the flag clapping in the wind. You guys heard that one? Yeah, yeah, the one where it's like like oh yeah, there's you can see the wind flapping. So yeah, there's, there's no there's, there's no, no wind, wind in space. In space you know? <laughs> now, is that on video or is that just yeah. a photo? I believe it was it, a photo. Correct. Yeah. It's just yeah, it's, it's him saluting. It's. Uh, yes, but the flag is stuck up, and yep. it, the way it's angled, it, and it looks like it's... I don't it's, believe is on video the actual flapping. I no. think that what, the, what the, the argument was is that it had been folded up and in like a box or a bag, and when it got pulled out, it's wrinkled. And no, it's no, 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 but this thing be, is stuck up. I, I understand, and it's hard fixed. Hard I, fixed. I've seen the image, right? But, so but this is what NASA said. Okay. Because this is cool. I, 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 love their, I love their rebuttals. They're like, oh, listen, flapping in the wind. We got this. Uh. They actually made a special flag. They purposely wanted it to look like it was waving in the wind because they know there's no wind in space. And you can see, yeah, if I you look that. at the image close enough, you can see it's a pole across the top because there's there's no way to keep the flag uh, upright. There's oh, no way they, to just droop. They actually just built, nothing. I guess, some metal wires into throughout the flag to make, make it, it look, look and yes. stand up. It, yeah. And not just stand up, like have it have that effect. Like it's yeah, because how anticlimactic would that be if Neil Armstrong just went, and it went, Oh yeah, right. Just no, there's <laughs> just, nothing. Like, just flat. Who's, yeah. Whose flag is that? Who's that? Uh, uh, what the heck? Yeah, yeah. America. It's gotta, uh, be, it's gotta be waving. This one's fun. Uh, so in one of the pictures, um, uh, Armstrong's taking a picture of, of Buzz Aldrin. Okay, and you look in the reflection of Buzz Aldrin's helmet, and Armstrong's hands are just kind of up and out, and he's not holding anything. Mm. Right. So oh, I want to see this image. 
Yeah, I've, I've, not, I've not seen this I zoomed one. in on it like a bunch of times, but here's what, this is what NASA said. NASA said, of course, because having loose camera equipment would be, you know, it, it doesn't make sense for, you know, this kind of mission and all this stuff. So they supposedly the camera was built into the chest of his suit. Oh, you tell me they had GoPros in 69? I guess. Is that what that was going on? Yeah, I mean, well, the government's more advanced than we are. Oh, so, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that was their rebuttal to that one. And again, sounds legit. Right? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, we don't know. That the camera's built into the suit? Yeah. Uh, interesting. Yeah, where, where I still got it. I don't think it's impossible. I don't think so either. But that's, Hell, if you look heck, at the picture. We, land, we landed on the moon. If you look at the picture, he is not, there's, he's not, he doesn't have any camera. Isn't this back in the day where you, when you take a picture, you got to wave it a bunch of times? Oh, stop. Get that out of there. Is that, what, is that what's going on? Is the that, po- Polaroid? Yeah, is that a pol- Polaroid camera? I'm pretty sure that's like the 80s. That's the 80s. This oh, is see like, what I'm saying though? Like even about 20 years before that? <laughs> Are you serious? He's built into the suit. Like, yeah, yeah. So, that sounds so, like a load a, of Malagna to a me. Rock, a rocket jet into space and landing on a planet, talking, and we can't make a camera. We can make things go boom. We can't make cameras smaller. No, it's not a go it's boom. It's sixty nine. We're talking about yes, landing boom. on a moon. No, at you the can right make you can make a big so, rocket go boom with enough fuel. You but can't, we can't make, make a camera. You can't make a suit? mini camera because that that doesn't mean it doesn't make. <laughs> so, it's not the same thing. There's not an advancement over here, and not over there. Okay, so. If, yeah, so I, all, all of our viewers out there, um, fans, why not? Listen, when you get a chance, check that video, uh, check that picture out. Um, maybe we can get Andy to post it up somewhere. I'm gonna find it. I'll post it. Uh, it's cool. It's cool to look at because you like look really close and you're like, he's not holding anything. But again, this is not. not I mean, the argument. suits do have stuff in the front. They I mean, do have a lot. Look at the images. You can see that because the re- I think the respirator system, a l- a lens part there. of the respirator system, comes in. Where's the and, film go? And uh, they, load it, they well, load it with film. I mean, film isn't that big. Or do they even have film? Is that no, oh, they, they got negatives. They may already had digital back then. I'm just stop. The, the government's bro, more advanced than we bro, are. I mean, was it on their Apple? Bro, you, yeah. like, bro, they probably don't even have digital on the inside of that spaceship. <laughs> Fun bro, fact: they was, made they made aliens on the planet, and not too gave yeah, them the technology to take pictures. Right? I mean, now it was the aliens that took the picture. That took the picture. You know, that's more believable. And they have stupid cloaking technology, so you don't see technology with Steve Jobs. I'm more apt to believe that there's aliens who took the photo for them than. The government time traveled to our time to grab a GoPro. It was Zuckerberg and the Lizardmen. Right. They were just there yes. to help us with the technology. Right. Here's, uh, here's the next fun one. Like? Uh, there's a man named Bart Sibrell. So Simpson? He, yeah, Bart Simpson. Yeah, Sibrell. He approaches Armstrong with a Bible and asks him to swear on it that he walked on the moon. And he asked him a few times in Armstrong, multiple different justifications this first one was like oh knowing you bart that's probably not even a real bible i mean that was his response to n- not putting his hand on the bible and swearing on it right so here's armstrong a man that quote unquote walked on the moon and a gentleman who full conspiracy theorist i mean like a big known one in fact armstrong knew who he was i get it but the man just walks up and st- says, hey, put your hand on the Bible and say, and swear that you walked on the moon. And Armstrong would not do it. So Seems pretty sus to me, dude. Right? Probably upset about that camera thing. I mean, whether you believe in the Bible or not, it, it, if it, you just do it, right? But yeah. that, that's the thing is, is, so they tried to, if you look, I, I dug and they were talking, they were trying to dig about his, his faith, his religion and stuff like that. And you know, there's been questions about his religion. Like, like I've asked him, in, and he always avoids the question. Uh, but there, there's a lot of belief that he was a devout uh, Christian, and so uh, I guess this is Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong. So a devout Christian being being presented with the Bible, being asked to basically swear on the Bible that he walked on the moon, and, and gave multiple reasons why that was not going to happen. Instead of just doing it. I just Google this because I, I wanted to know. I was like, oh, I wonder if he's a Christian because that would make sense why he's not wanting to put his hand on the Bible, right? Yeah. We talk about time in the Bible, you know, Bible yeah. where Jesus is tempted by the devil, yeah. right? And, and he's tempted to prove that he is who he is and he doesn't do it, right? Right, Because he doesn't have any, he doesn't have to prove, yeah. right? Like, that's the point. Um, he's actually a deist. So a theist is someone that believes in God and believes that God governs all. Right. A deist is someone that believes in God but doesn't believe that he governs all and that he's here with us. But basically that he did create but after creation that he, he's gone. I, I did find another article that uh, one of his family members was interviewed and, and they did say that there was 
Christian background. But again, yeah, but I mean, either uh, here or again, there, yeah, both of those, change. Both of those are kind of, interchangeable with Christianity. But my point it's, is, why don't you just do it? Why don't you just put, slap your hand on the Bible? Like, sure, I walk on the moon. But, but do you have to prove that? I mean, do you have to? Uh, uh, again, we're challenging mind, faith. We're talking about faith this, in the 60s. You're right. But when this happened, there was a ton. Like, it's very prevalent today. The conspiracy theory of, of us not landing on the moon is still like, like you, can, you can see that it's top of the Google searches and conspiracies um, today in, in 2021. But back then, it was like, it was a big, big thing. It was he, a big topic. He probably, it, like, a he lot probably of people. S- probably saw it more as like a disrespectful thing for yeah, someone to do possibly because just because someone is so like just not believing in what you have done and things like that so it probably that's probably yeah, why I just my thought process is, is if he had, if he's done this right and he's done it for real the guy on two things it's probably got an ego right Arm- he's a guy that well, there's a armstrong. joke by brian regan oh, from years okay. ago where he's like how, imagine being neil armstrong like you know when you have like those friends and you're, you, we'll use like wisdom teeth, right? Like, oh, I had uh, I had two wisdom teeth pulled. This is the joke from Brian Regan, so I'm stealing it totally. He's like, oh, yeah, I had uh, two wisdom teeth pulled last week and it wasn't that bad. And then Cody's like, well, I had three. Well, imagine being like, being told that story, that something you did great. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I just landed a million dollar sale. And Neil Armstrong walks in, he's all, well, I walked on the moon. I walked on the moon. <laughs> and so you, the, 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 the pretense behind that is this idea that he probably had an ego. The guy first to walk on the moon. He was yeah. there. It happened. Could you imagine being challenged and being challenged a lot? So and, if, if and it happened, which I believe it did, you were getting co- constantly challenged. You've got these movies. You've got all this stuff the happening. You're the commander. You're the, the guy. The whole mission. Right? You're right. the guy that, that, that they're challenging everything against. I would feel like I don't have to defend myself. You're right. I was there. You don't need to believe it. I agree. I just find out. Again, it's, it, this is why it's in my, my quirky section on this one. It's just like, it was just kind of like. Yeah, I mean, I, I can know. see that being sus, but again, sixty nine yeah. different set of you know a different set of values people had. He he may he may have. There's a number of reasons as to why I can see him not. He probably just didn't give it any, you know. Yeah, power. So, um, so this 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 last fun one to look at, just to analyze for a minute, just really look at this. So we did it six times. Okay, do you know that there are six major world space agencies? Six major. China, Russia, Japan. China, Russia, Japan, European, America, and there's one more getting it. My apologies out there if you're part of that agency. But there are six major agencies. Not one other agency has gotten a person to the moon. Bro, our flag's there. Um, Don't be touching. That's ours. Just so you know, if you look it up. That's an act of war. All five of the other agencies have been trying and are still trying. China just said that they will be there by 2030. 2030. We did it in 1969, and China's not going to make it till 2030? During Trump's presidency, they actually had a plan to do the 2024, and they would actually have the first woman. To do it again. The first woman step on. But I I, I know it's been paused. But but I'm just analyzing these other countries have been dumping money, money, money into their programs. And they eat, and China is the only one that's claiming that they will finally get there. Get there. I'm not talking about landing. They haven't gotten a single human being to the moon. To the moon. Again, forget the landing piece, which is the hardest, according to Armstrong. We're just talking about getting them there. No other agency has done it. We did it in 1969. We did it six times, and all six times we landed and walked and studied and. They can't even get them there. I know we are an advanced country, but so are others. China is a, is a technologically advanced country, and they are claiming they will get there by 2030. That's 61 years. 61 years. Think about everything that's advanced since then. 61 years since we landed. Well, it's, it's been just long enough now that people don't care. Right. And so I think that's where this pop is coming from. And I'm assuming that's why Trump did what he did. He's like, 2024, we're going to have a woman on the moon because China said that they were going to do it in 2030. So we don't like to, to be beat in anything again, right? I, I, I don't know. And I agree. Okay. If you so, look at the reports, they state that they have been advancing their technology this entire time for that specific reason. And you I, can I, look, look this up. I, I'm sure. This is their to agency. To me, the argument, that probably has the most like concrete argument, right? Is the idea that we... We've done this all these years ago. Yeah. Why is it taking so long for us to get back? I mean, I think about it like and Elon Musk with the way he lands rockets. 
right? That's we launch crazy. a rocket, yeah. it goes in the moon, goes around, whatever, comes back yeah. and lands on a boat in the middle of the ocean. And you're it's like, fantastic. we can't land on the SpaceX. moon. Yeah. So like, yeah. But, and so these other countries have sent mod, um, uh, unmanned, they, they've sent unmanned things to the moon and landed unmanned, you know, modules, but they can't get a large enough craft that houses people to the moon, much alone land on it. We did it six times in 1969. We're in 2021. And still, no other agency has done it. America. <laughs> yes. Oh, we, yes, yeah, definitely. We had uh, no other country has done it. Uh, Russia actually has a flag on it. Because they did it unmanned. Yeah, they did, they did a did robot. A drone. Going, yeah, no. there's a robot that put a little, flag, see, little Russian be, flag on there. No, no, no. Because <laughs> see, that's what I'm saying. They want to be there. Because you can take a much smaller craft and get yeah, it there. It's, it's, in order to get people there, you, you got to talk about a craft. large living space. Yeah. You got to talk about food. You got to take all these different things. Next few days. They mission. can't do it. And we did it in 1969. We needed somewhere to put the aliens from Area 51. Right. All right. So right. they're loyal to us. Okay? Thank you. That's what it is. They're loyal to us. Because here's what's next. Oh, God. Here here's go. what's next. Here's the, let's, let's get a little deeper down that rabbit hole. So we're just going to say moon landing was real. All six of them handled it. America, as my buddy Andy puts it, uh, we handle business and these other countries can't, but hey, they'll get there eventually. Now, on to why we haven't gone back and some of the ties to that. Uh, the alien conspiracy that life was met there a couple times or one time, and we'll go into that, but um, this is just kind of a fun adage. Um, I don't, you know, we're we're up in the air about the alien thing, you know, except for Zuckerberg being a lizard man. Definitely believe that. Uh, but Buzz Aldrin on a Science Channel interview stated that during the Apollo 11 mission, that objects he could not identify were following it. And then upon returning to Earth, Earth was briefed immediately to not discuss the event. Okay. So then he gets on this air, he gets on the Science Channel interview, says these things, and immediately. Keeping in mind that NASA contacted the Science Channel, Science Channel, <laughs> bust them out, I guess, but contacted the Science Channel, refused to do an open communication so that they could not be recorded or anything, and stated, oh, it was panels that separated from the spacecraft. Okay. Armstrong, or excuse me, Buzz Aldrin stated uh, that these things were following him, uh, you know, as he's preparing to land because he was the pilot. And, um, that was his stance. Now, again, I'm just looking at Buzz Aldrin as like, you hired this guy, he's highly decorated, he's flying the mission, and he stated that objects that he could, uh, not identify were following him. So, was it separation panels from the spacecraft? Possibly. But again, this isn't some kook. This isn't some just random dude off the street. He's even much higher than our first buddy that we talked about. If only he had a camera to take pictures of the Doesn't things. he have one of those built in a right. suit? I mean, I mean, that's kind of odd. So, so again, everything gets wouldn't. debriefed. When you land, everything gets debriefed and removed. So, And he was debriefed specifically to not discuss the events. And then he goes on much later on the Science Channel interview and discusses the events. Love it. Legend. Now, I, I just say, if that's true, why did we go back five more times? I, it's actually four more times, right? Because we, we failed one. But the, still, the point is, five times, why did we go back? I mean, are we going back and we having some tea with these aliens? Well, or? he didn't say that they attacked him. It's not like he said that, you know, some Star Trek... He just said he, could, he didn't identify him. ...spaceship jumps out of nowhere and shoots him down. No, you're right. He said they didn't identify him. And I think, especially NASA and especially the way our country is, is if he did encounter some form of it, that's probably why we went back. <laughs> All right? Like, we got to see what those are. Right. And so, uh, going forward, Apollo 14, astronaut Edgar Mitchell, okay, PhD from MIT, highly intelligent individual. In fact, Apollo 14 should not have been able to land on the moon. It had a lot of issues, and a quick, just jumped out, he reprogrammed the computer. He wrote, like, I forget how many lines of code it said he wrote, but in a very quick amount of time, just cranked out a bunch of lines of code in order to get the shuttle to just land. Okay. This was like in flight or before? In flight, yeah. No, in trying to trying to get it. Because again, remember, what trajectories. What a baller. Too, right? This guy's legit. Uh, but in 1973, two years after Apollo had landed on the moon, um, 
he claimed that military head officials had hidden the had hidden evidence of aliens and alien spacecraft. So he goes on just two years, just two years. We're not talking twenty years later and Alzheimer's is set in or something like that. No. Two years after he had landed and done the Apollo 14 mission, he goes on to state top military officials had hidden evidence. Just saying. So now you got Buzz I mean, Aldrin. It's a good place to hide it. You got it. Buzz Aldrin. Three Apollos later, you got Edgar Mitchell. I mean, one guy's a kook. You guys. Is it a coincidence? Uh, I think not. I think not as well. Yeah. Which just ties in this last one. This one's super fictional, but Apollo 18 movie. Have you guys seen it? No, I have not. I watched the trailer because uh, I actually didn't know it existed. And you're like, hey, you guys should look at this. Of course, I haven't had time to, to watch it. But so if I mean, Apollo 17 was the last mission to the moon and we found volcanic glass and we found all this proof that at one point the, the, the moon had life and we come back all excited with all this stuff. And then they're like, oh, and by the way, Apollo 18, 19 and 20 were planned. And then they go, oh, budget cuts, not going anymore. We're done. Never going to the moon again. Right. And so uh, it's like, wow. I know that we finally found stuff and now we don't want to go anymore. Yeah, that's what NASA's for. Hey, that's what I thought. <laughs> and I get it. They're spending a lot of money. But so Apollo 18 comes out. And if you watch Apollo 18, for all you guys out there, uh, it's kind of a horror flick. So if you're like into scary movies, I wouldn't watch it. But it, it's kind of a cool thought because they, they shoot it like it was lost footage of a secret mission to the moon where they do encounter some aggressive alien life. And it's crazy because when the movie came out, the conspiracy theories just completely, I mean, of course, there's all the ones that still believe in land, but now there's these ones over here that are like, oh man, like we landed, but, and we found some cool stuff in 17. Like we found some cool stuff in Apollo 17. We know that we know that the moon very well had life at one point of some sort. And then all of a sudden this stuff comes down. Everybody's like, oh man, they did find alien. And again, you got these other two guys that in previous years stated Alien stuff, right? And mm-hmm. you got Aldrin in 11, you got Edgar Mitchell in 14, and then boom, 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 this t- <laughs> Apollo 18 movie comes out. Conspiracy ma- theories make the best movies. They're the best. It's right? great. We, we, we were talking about this before the podcast, right? Capricorn 1. Now, I know Cody's never watched it. I watched it years ago. 1977. We talked about the first incident where they mentioned conspiracies about the moon landing being fake. Yeah. A movie comes out in 1977, of course, starring O.J. Simpson, which is great. Nice. He's one of the three. But the, the plan was that NASA was going to take these three men and they well, were going to land on Mars. Cody, you know who O.J. Simpson is, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm yeah, sure. he, he murdered that movie, bro. Yep. Um, <laughs> killed it. Uh, killed it. Killed it. I mean, <laughs> whew. But anyways, back to what I'm saying. Uh, the, the premise of the movie is basically that, that, that NASA had these three astronauts and they were going to be flying to Mars and landing on Mars. Something is, I believe, if I remember the premise correctly, like they figure out that there's like a, an issue or a mechanical issue with the podcast, or not the podcast, <laughs> my brain uh, with the spaceship yeah, and they decide to scrap the mission, but they don't want to let people know. Right. So they do this idea. They're going to basically film the landing yes. inside of a studio, a Hollywood right. studio. Right. And so that's where a lot of those conspiracies came from there. We're like, Oh God, it was filmed in a studio in Hollywood. And that's how they did it. It is a swindle. And there was a bond film that showed like yep. he's, he's, he's running through yeah, some yeah, Hollywood set yeah. or some through some set. And it's like a, it's a moon landing set and he jumps in a rover yeah and it's, uh, it, that, that's supposed to that's supposed to be the capricorn one yeah. movie set kind of thing from right, the movie but right. yeah it's it no totally but so apollo 18 definitely a fictional movie um but i i really i, I found a lot of fun in it because it's again the way this movie's filmed as if it is lost 1970s footage because by now they have full-blown camcorders in their suits not just you know cameras and uh and it's some footage and some aliens attack them. And then, it, but it was great. I, I think, I think if you're into conspiracy theories about the, the moon landings or aliens and uh, definitely something cool to watch. But, uh, so yeah, so we don't know. Um, there's definitely without a doubt, tons of evidence that would suggest we landed on the moon. We got a lot of great missions behind it. Um, and you know, it, again, Paul 17, really cool. Found some cool stuff about the moon that it very well held life at some point. All so, right. All right. So final thoughts. All right, we got final thoughts here, okay? I the, believe the, I, I believe it happened. The, the, yeah, it right. Happened. The premise is yeah. the conspiracy America, theory we're right? talking about is this idea: mm-hmm. Did we land to the moon? Yeah, all right. Is the first argument? Yeah, which and then the second answer did, is, yeah. is why we haven't been back. Aliens. So we did land on the moon, and but your yes. your thought process is is because there's aliens. Yeah. 
What? Okay. I think they've made them. Uh, we we. I think possibly. I don't think that they're aggressive. I think we've allowed them to set up shop. Like, hey, you guys want to build your, your sure. little kickback here? Sure. Hey, listen. Stop landing in Roswell, New Mexico. Yeah. Here's where you go. Yeah. We're we're gonna give you. We're gonna we're gonna we're give gonna, you land. We're not gonna let people look I mean, at the moon. We as Americans, we did it with the Native Americans. Like, hey, we're gonna take majority of your country, but you can go live over there. Land next to our flag, not Russia's. Right. Got you. That's right. Got you. Yeah. If just you stay can, right there. Stay in this little if you area. Can knock theirs over. That'd be great. Yeah. In fact, Cut. when they show up. Can you take them out for us? Yeah. I mean, that's well, probably, you know. But that, again, this is back in the 70s. True. 60s and 70s. True. So. I've even been back. So now they're probably like, hey, hey. M- maybe we have. Well, that's what Apollo 18 suggests. So anyways. Okay. Cody? Mm-hmm. Cody? Thought. Um, Final thought. L- landed? First. Yeah. Okay. So we probably landed. And. Wow. That sounds so certain. Um, I, I'm still, like, I'm still 75, 25. 75 being, to- yeah, sure, we landed. But 25 being, eh. There's some bologna. I smell it. <laughs> and I can't not smell the bologna. It's too um, distinct. It's, it's potent. It's very potent. So it's, I can't ignore it. So it's a 75-25 for me. Um, why didn't we go back? I mean, probably aliens, because I think when we went, I think that, um, I think that Buzz Aldrin and uh, Neil are not real people anymore. I think they're aliens. And they, when they came, like, they swap places. And so now the aliens were them, and now they're they're among us. They're living among us, and they have been for several and, years. And and Edgar Mitchell too. And they dropped the truth bomb. Exactly. They're like, "Hey, yeah. we're going to tell you, yeah. what's up." Because we're not scared of your government because we're out of this world. Y'all are crackpots, yeah. you know? <laughs> just absolute <laughs> crackpots. Of course, it happened. We just talked about thirty billion dollars, right? To go. Yeah. I, could you imagine what thirty billion dollars would look like now? Yeah. Uh, actually, I Googled it already, so I'll give you the answer. There, the estimation is about $140 billion for us to go back. Mind you, that since like the mid to early 2000s, we've been defunding NASA. So now yeah. we've gone more private with SpaceX. The reason Na- we haven't gone back is too expensive. And there's no political reason to go back. NASA was just a money washer. Maybe. They filtered it through and sent it off to other countries so that we never saw it. The, the, the biggest reason is two <laughs> yeah. things, right? Yeah, and the symbiote got all the way up to the head of NASA and it shut itself down. Yeah. The yeah. main reason we went in the first place was you had a president that was in office. You had Russia, who was a, a Soviet Union. Big power. A, big power. Yep. A counter power, an yep. opposite power. Yep. Attempting, they, they got into space with the idea, and, and our president is having to answer to people going, hey, yes. this has, we have to get there, right? Oh. So I think dumping $30 billion in the 60s and 70s to do this. This is why we have Andy. He keeps it 100 Right. With the right. facts. Well, he keeps it with the, the surface facts. The I surface facts. That's just, what we're going to call them. I don't want crazy people Andy's surface just facts. listening to us. Surface facts with Andy. Andy's corner. That's going to yeah. be the, the spinoff. The, the side quest <laughs> podcast. Yeah. Listen, guys, we're out of time. Hey, we love you. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and follow on Apple, Spotify. Um, we will be back at you. Episode seven coming soon. Hey, we love you guys. Peace out.